Hey there ladies, welcome to my channel. My name is Tanya and I use the name Thin Hair Latina on all of my social media accounts. So you can find me on Instagram, here on YouTube, etc. And today I have an exciting video for you guys. I'm going to show you how to put in some face framing layers into your toppers and also put in layers throughout. We'll also be showing you how I customized this piece that I got from Uniwigs uh, to just make it look even more natural than it already came. So before I go on to show you guys how I cut this topper and um, how it dries, how to, I styled it, all of that, I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. So this is the Melanie Topper. It is made with 100% human hair and it is really good quality hair in my opinion. It you know feels super soft. This hair does have, at least the one, the topper that I received, does have a slight wave to it. Um, it was supposed to be the straight topper, but it sounds like from talking to uh, the Uniwigs team that sometimes because it's human hair, there are some that are a little bit wavier than others and you know, that's normal because it's human hair. So, uh, this topper has a slight wave to it, but it was very easy to uh, straighten it and then add in these, you know, bouncy curls. So, the topper is 20 inches long, and I actually measured it myself, and it is a little bit longer than 20 inches. It's actually 22 inches, which is awesome, because my hair is about 21 inches. So. That worked out really, really well for me. And I think it's a sign of how generous um, Uniwigs is with their measuring. Also, this topper is a eight and a half by nine inch base. So it is, I believe, their largest topper. It covers up until about here of my head, which is great because it gives you a lot of coverage. And it is also made with a monofilament top base. So if you look here, you'll see that this looks a lot like skin. And um, I did do a few things to personalize it. I put in some scar tape and I'm going to show you guys all of that as well. But I honestly, I've been absolutely loving this topper. I think it's great. This color is the espresso color. And by the way, you can find all the details in, um, in the description below as well. But yeah, really liking this topper, but I always feel that when you get a topper in, it's really easy to just look at it and be like, oh no, <laughs> this doesn't look exactly like I wanted to. So I wanted to show you guys how I customized it, how it looked the first time I put it on, like right out of the box, and what I did to make it more me. So um, I'm gonna show you guys first a picture of what it looked like when I first put it on, and then I'm gonna walk you guys through how I cut it, how I put the makeup on the part, all of that. So as promised, here is the topper immediately after I took it out of the box. You can see that it looks pretty natural as is, but I knew I wanted to add in some face framing layers and some layers overall. I also wanted to make the part line a bit more obvious with some makeup and some scar tape, so I'll show you guys how I did that. Okay, so first off, I'm gonna start by spraying down the topper with a water bottle filled with water to make sure the hair is wet and easy to manipulate. I'm also gonna use a rat tail comb to make sure that the part is um, down the center line because I do tend to switch where I make my part and I want my face framing and layers to be symmetrical on both sides. So once I think that that center part is pretty solid, I'm gonna grab my scissors. And I can't stress enough how important it is to have a pair of sharp, good hair cutting shears. I got this set from Amazon about five years ago and I will link it below because it's great. The next step is I'm going to take a small section and uh, it'll look a little bit like a triangle. And I'm going to take that section and pull it across the parting line. You'll see what I'm doing here. So once I pull it across the parting line, I make sure I have it really taut and then I select where I want to cut it and then just make a cut there. 
you'll see that that's my first cut, not the only cut I'm going to make. I'm going to replicate that on the other side of this topper, pulling the hair across the mannequin, making it taut, then using one of the hairs from the last um, cut I did as a guide for how to cut the other side. So now both sides should be pretty symmetrical and look similar. Now I'm going to use that cut that I made as the start of this face framing. I want the face framing to continue all the way down to the longest length of this topper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the shears and just drag them across the hair at an angle to make sure that I can get those face framing layers. Then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Typically one side or another will be more difficult, uh, so just watch out for that. Depending on whether you're right-handed or left-handed, I assume. So if you are just planning on doing some face framing, that is pretty much it. It's that simple and there's not really much else to it. But I knew that I wanted to be able to do a little bit of layering as well, so I'm going to show you how I do some of that. I'm going to flip the topper over to the back so you guys can get a better view of this and brush out the hair so that it's nice and detangled as I go to cut. Also going to uh, secure this topper down with some T-pin needles to make sure it's not going to move anywhere. I'm going to brush this hair out and then take the top section to make sure I get that top crown area. Gonna then brush it out and pull it up at a 45 degree angle. Going to uh, take my fingers to facilitate the angle at which I want to cut. This is gonna make it so that the topmost uh, hairs are a tiny bit shorter than the bottommost. So that's what's gonna give that subtle layering that's not, you know too obvious and just looks like your hair has been growing out. I'm going to try to repeat this on all sides of this topper. So anywhere that's towards the part line, I'm going to try and do this so that I can get that nice layering effect throughout. So you'll see I do the 45 degree angle again, then pull back down and cut. Honestly, this technique is really easy to do, and it will get easier and easier the more times you do it. It typically takes me about 20 or so minutes to do this type of haircut, since I am pretty cautious with it. So here you see the hair as it is air drying. It has a little bit of a beach wave to it. So I thought that was really nice, but you can see some of the layers as it's air drying. I think it helps bring out the curls a little bit better to have these nice soft layers. You can see there, that's what they look like. I will also uh, show what this looks like with straightened hair because I think it's a little bit easier to see the cut and the layers with straight hair. Now you can see the layers with the hair fairly straightened. You can definitely see that face framing and the kind of body and bounce that adding just that tiny bit of layers gives you. The next thing I did to customize this piece is I wanted to widen the part line. So you can see there I did a little bit at the front, now I'm going back a little bit. I grab some hairs and then pull them out. I take a random uh, scattering of hairs. You don't want to pull too much in any given area, so just be a little careful about it. But this helps widen the part and make it look a bit more like a natural part. I also add a little bit of powder to the part line to help it match the color of my scalp skin. 
Last but not least, I use scar tape or silicone tape on the inside of the cap to help give it that skin look. I think this is a great trick to help your monotops look even more skin-like. So this is the finished result. You can see here I put on the topper and just blend a little bit of my hair with it and it looks super natural because of all the layers and the part line. If you are interested in this product or any products from Uniwigs, you can use the code THINHAIR to receive 15% off at uniwigs.com. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. Uh, let me know if you decide to cut any face framing layers into your toppers or you decide to use scar tape or anything like that. I would be so interested in seeing what you guys do with your wigs and toppers um, with all of this information. But yeah, make sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment if you have any questions or just want to say hello. Bye.